Hello and welcome again to my physics video lecture supplement series. And uh, this is actually part two of a series concerning the Atwoods machines. In part one, I actually considered an ideal Atwood machine in which there was no mass uh, of the pulley. So now I'm ready to consider a slightly less ideal a uh, slightly more physical Atwoods machine in which the uh, pulley actually has some mass and therefore some inertia. So to set this uh, system up, actually the same two equations still apply to mass 2 and mass 1, but uh, in the standard treatment of this uh, physical pulley system, we no longer can use the, uh, the idea that the two tensions are equal. So we'll leave them as not being equal, but other than that, each mass has a tension and a weight uh, pulling in opposite directions upon it. Uh, if the two tensions are not treated as equal, then we actually need a third equation because here we actually have three unknowns. So we need an equation number three um, to solve for those unknowns. And that equation number three basically says, now let's consider what happens to the pulley itself. So the pulley itself has some torque upon it from each of these two uh, strings that are attached to it. And so on one side it's being torqued in a counterclockwise direction and in the other it's being torqued in a clockwise direction. And so these two torques basically should be subtracted from one another. And that is going to be equal to the moment of inertia of the pulley times the angular acceleration of the pulley. So that gets us our third equation. Now, um, we should probably look up here and notice that the pulley has a uh, moment of inertia which is similar to that of a solid disk. And so we have an equation for that moment of inertia. Um, it is one-half times the mass of the pulley times the pulley's radius squared. So this equation really can say one-half mass pulley radius of pulley squared times alpha. Alpha is the angular acceleration again. And uh, at this point, we should notice that the acceleration of each mass is going to be equal, and it's going to be the same acceleration as every part of the string. And so that string's acceleration is basically going to be a sort of tangential acceleration of a point on this rotating circle. And so that basically means that the acceleration that we're trying to find is equal to the radius of the pulley times the angular acceleration of the pulley. Or in other words, angular acceleration is the tangential acceleration over the radius of the pulley. So we can make a little substitution into this equation for that. So now we have acceleration over radius of pulley. And I notice that there's a radius of pulley squared and a radius of pulley, so I should here cancel my like terms. And this is what I'm left with. Now, let's look at these two torque terms. Um, since torque is R cross F, um, the, the two torques from tension are basically going to be uh, given by the radius of the pulley times the uh, force of tension acting upon 
this pulley, and then this sine of angle is actually equal to one because the, the radius is this way and the tension is this way. They're perpendicular. So um, torque for tension one is going to be force of tension one times radius. And torque for tension two is going to be force for tension two times radius. So I can replace those two terms up in this equation. So I have force of tension two times radius minus force of tension one times radius. Okay, so at this point, it's advisable to divide everything in this equation again by this radius of the pulley. And the reason why is because it appears in every single term. So if I divide both sides by radius and pulley uh, of the pulley, this is what I'm basically left with. And so that's kind of a surprising first result. It basically says that um, for a pulley of uh, any radius, the radius basically doesn't matter, all that matters is the mass so long as this pulley is basically treatable as a solid disk. So the radius of the pulley apparently has no effect on the acceleration of this system. Um, <clears throat> okay, so at this point we are down to three equations and three unknowns. So our unknowns are these tensions and this acceleration. So what we should do is substitute this and this into this third equation for these two forces. Um, so what I have is uh, m2g minus m2a and that minus m1g plus m1a has to be equal to one half MPA. So once again, we need to get all of the A terms on one side and all of the G terms on the other. So this, this, and this all need to be on the left. And this term and this term need to be moved to the right. So rearranging that equation, uh, rearranging this equation to make that happen, I end up with, uh, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the G's and the A's as well, I'll end up with M2 uh, plus M1 plus MP. over 2, that is, times A. That is going to be equal to M2 minus M1 times G. Okay, so if I need to solve for this acceleration, I basically need to divide both term, both sides by this term here. So that gives me an m2 plus m1 plus one half m p. Okay, so now I've solved for the acceleration of the non-ideal pulley. Great. So um, before putting any numbers into this thing, I'd like to highlight something, which is that if the mass of the pulley is zero, that basically eliminates this last term in the denominator. And so I'd end up with m2 minus m1 over m2 plus m1 all times g. And that was, in fact, what we had here for the ideal case, where the mass was, in fact, zero. So that's a good sign. 
Um, and basically what it means is that the, uh, the thing that I've derived here for acceleration in the real uh, pulley case actually does simplify to the ideal case when the real pulley's mass goes to zero, as is the only simplification from the real case to the ideal case. So, you know, so far so good. We've done everything right. So at this point, um, it, it, it falls to uh, plugging in some actual numbers. So uh, how much mass do we want this pulley to have? Well, um, I can think of two um, maybe interesting cases. There's really a third case. The, the, the third case would be make this thing super massive, make it a lot bigger than either of these two masses. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do is two other cases, one where it's a lot less than the other two masses, and the other where it's comparable to maybe a little less than the other two masses. Because those are more uh, common pulley cases uh, as opposed to, I don't know, uh, I guess in, in, in like a large crane case in which you've suspended two very small objects, then you'd have the super massive pulley case. Okay, so let's use um, case number one, mass of pulley equals 50 grams. So 50 grams, recall, is also equal to 0 0.05 kilograms. So this is considerably smaller than the mass of either of these things and is about a factor of 10 smaller than the difference between them. Okay, so in this case the acceleration is going to be 2.5 kilograms minus 2.0 kilograms divided by 2.5 kilograms plus 2.0 kilograms plus one half of 1.0, uh, uh, excuse me, 0.0 kilograms. And all that times 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, well, uh, plug all those numbers in. You get 0.5 here, you get 4.55 here. Um, so you end up with a total acceleration of about 1.08. So A is approximately 1.08 meters per second squared. Okay, um, so that's maybe a 1% difference from the ideal case, which was 1.09 meters per second squared. What happens if we end up doing a larger mass. Let's make the mass maybe one kilogram. Okay, if that's the case, then everything here stays the same. It's just that instead of 0.05, what we really end up with is 1.00 kilogram here. Okay, so that, that difference from the uh, 0 0.05 kilogram to the 1.00 kilogram, that difference basically makes for a difference from an acceleration of 1.08 to an acceleration of about 0.98 meters per second squared. Okay, so and that means that once this mass of this pulley starts getting comparable and once the basically moment of inertia gets sizable uh, we start seeing a more drastic effect on the actual acceleration of these two blocks so it's a 10 percent difference as opposed to a one percent difference okay and that's all i've got time for today so i hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching